Hey guys, welcome back to Tennessee Grilling and Smoking. I'm Dustin, and first I want to say thank you to all the messages I got on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all social medias. Uh, just people calling and checking on uh, me and the family, making sure everything's good, everybody's all right. Well, uh, uh, I can assure you everything is what's been going on. As some of y'all might know, about two and a half, three years ago, I started getting into axe throwing. And uh, me and two of my buddies decided, hey, let's just go ahead and open up our own axe house. And we did, and it's turned out really good. It's in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's in West Town Mall. It's called Knox Axe House. So if anybody here is local, come up here and throw some axes with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, we've got into that. And uh, a little bit more exciting news from Axe, axe Throwing is me and my two buddies, we and all three got bids to go to the U.S. Open and throw. So here in about two weeks, we're all heading up to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and to throw in the U.S. Open to get another chance to throw on ESPN. So that's pretty exciting. But uh, just wanted to say thank you for everybody that checked on me, all the messages I got. Thank you so much. But now, the Axe House is starting to run good. We can kind of back off of it. It's running really good. We ain't got to be up there all the time, and I've got a little bit more time to come back and do what I like to do the most, and that's cook for you guys. So today, we're going to start off with a bang right here. You see it? Look at that. That is the Thor's Hammer. Beef shank, beef shim, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people, they'll already have it. They'll buy it cut up already and they'll use it for stews. That's not how we're going to do it today. We're going to smoke the whole thing on here. We're going to do it to 205 and we're going to pull it like pork. And boy, I hope it's going to be good. I ain't never done it before, but I've saw a lot of people do it and it looks amazing. So hopefully we'll get that. Really easy. I should have already, I've already got it prepped. I should have filmed this part. I forgot to. I wasn't sure if I was even going to make a video or not today. So apologize but it was real simple this just came like this from the butcher uh, the bone was already exposed had a little bit of silver skin but as you can see right here had a lot of silver skin so when I trimmed that up this flap opened up a little bit and so what I did was I got uh, three pieces of butcher twine tied her back together nice and tight so she'll hold together good so you can pick it up wave it in the air do all the fun things you want to do with it but got her tied up together, got her seasoned today with Uncle Steve Shake. I tell you what, I've been, uh, that right there has made me a believer. I saw everybody on YouTube using that stuff. And I talked to Uncle Steve himself, and he sent me a couple samples of it, and I got hooked on it. So, yeah, Uncle Steve Shake, or uh, the cow powder, we got her seasoned done with it. Uh, silver skin trimmed off, wrapped up in butcher paper. Got the smoker going up to 250 degrees. That's where she's about at right now. So, we're going to go ahead and just take her off, and Stand her out on up like that. Cover back up. The wood I'm using, I've got one little piece of cherry wood in there and I got about four or five little chunks of hickory. So hopefully it'll get, that cherry's gonna give it that nice color we all like. That hickory's gonna give it that great flavor that we're looking for. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I'm gonna come out here and check it here in probably about an hour, see where we're at. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do it like a brisket. If it gets to 160, I'm gonna see how it looks. I don't know if we're gonna wrap it up or not. We'll just have to wait and see what it looks like when we get there. But like I said, the end result, we're looking for 205 degrees, 203, 205, we're gonna pull it off. And uh, hopefully, it'll turn out good. I'll see you here a little bit. All right, so it's been exactly three hours. Let's come over here and let's check this out. We've done a really good job of keeping it right at 250 this whole entire time. Boy, I need to clean this weather. Oh boy, look at that. Yes, sir. All right, it's getting a good, nice, it's hardening up. It's getting a good little bark on there. It's, it smells amazing. It looks great. So, yeah, let's check the temperature on it. So we're looking about 160. Is what I'm, right now we're at 150 right there. That's 152. Down here toward the bottom. We're, about 156. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up. So I was looking on YouTube and I came across a channel. I think is uh, can't think of his name, but his channel was Pitmaster X, and he did this cook. And that's kind of what I'm basing this off of. Because once again, I've never done this. I've just been wanting to. And at 160, he pulled his out and wrapped it up and he made a compound butter and put it on top, wrapped it up in full, put it back in there and just let her eat until it's 205. And so I believe that's what I'm gonna do. I went ahead and I made the compound butter in the kitchen. It, was, it uh, consists of just a stick of butter, about a tablespoon and a half of lemon juice. I have some parsley in there. I have some oregano in there and I have some basil in there and a little bit of salt. Mix that all together and I put it in the fridge. It's been in there for about 30, 40 minutes chilling. 
And so what I'm going to do now is it's close enough. It's around at 150, 155, I'm almost there. Go ahead and we'll wrap it up, put that butter on there. We're going to put her back on and let it stay there to 205. See you in a second. All right. Let's give this a go. Looking good. You can see right here, this is my compound butter. It's been chilling for about 30 minutes, and I'm just going to douse it on there. We're having a storm here today, too. We'll wrap it up, it'll all melt in together. Easy as that. I'm going to put her back on here. And he did increase his temperature up closer to 300 after uh, he wrapped it, so I believe I'm going to do the same. I'm going to open up my bottom vents a little bit, try to get that temperature up there. It's been doing really good staying at right around 250. We're going to bring her up to 300, and I'll check that temperature per periodically. I'll come back here in about an hour, see how it's looking. But in the meantime, check this out. My smoked mac and cheese. That's gonna go right there with it. It's gonna be good. If you never, if you never made the smoked mac and cheese, and never saw my video, I'm gonna put a tag right up here. Go on there and check that out, guys. Simple to make, best mac and cheese you'll ever eat. But uh, I'll sit here in about an hour. We'll come out here. We'll check, see what the temperature is doing, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting close. All right. So it's been exactly five and a half hours. Come out here, check it out. I know as soon as I stepped outside, I could smell it. So that's a good sign. Two hundred one, two hundred three. All right, two hundred three. That's exactly where I want it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to let it rest. I'm going to put on some French fries. Get my mac and cheese ready for a little display there. But I'm going to let this rest probably about forty minutes to an hour. We'll come back, unwrap it, try it out. All right, guys. Moment of truth. It's sitting here. It's resting for about forty minutes. My wife went in there, made some French fries, put them on there. I got my smoked mac and cheese right here on this cast iron pot. Let's go ahead and. Unwrap this thing, see what we're working with. A lot of juice. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That right there looks amazing. Holy cow. Now I've still got that butcher twine I need to cut off here. But I'm just gonna stick it right up in here. Tell you what. That looks so good. Alright, so I'm gonna go over here and grab my scissors real quick. I'm gonna cut this off. We're gonna shred it up. We're gonna try it and see how it tastes. Right Alright, we got them cut. Let's just take this butcher twine off. There's one. There's two. And there's three. Perfect. Alright, so I'm going to come over here. So look at that. See that smoke ring's already in there. Just as tender. I bet, I bet this will just slide. This slides right out. All right, let's tear it up and let's see what we got. Just as tender. Boy, this is just shredding. This feels just like pulled pork. Look at that. All right. Well, there we go. All right, let's dig in and try this. All right, we're gonna dig in and try a piece here now. Okay. 
<laughs> my god. That. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. That's like, uh, it's, it's in between, I don't know, kind of like a roast beef or a roast and a brisket. I, I, I really, that's the first time I've had beef shin. I've never made it before. Uh, but the taste is just so good. It's just, like I said, it's really close. I can, I almost want to say it tastes a little bit like a brisket. But you know, whenever you do a pot roast and something that meat that's in there, a lot like it so I can see why a lot of people use this in stews uh, the flavor is just great uh, love it I think it turned out absolutely perfect guys check that out right there I'm gonna end up tearing this thing up my boys in there sitting at the table he's been waiting this took a little bit longer than I expected it was a five and a half hours but here it is guys check that out all right so do me a favor guys if you enjoyed the video if you liked what you saw Get on the thing, uh, subscribe to me if you haven't already. I know I haven't been making videos lately, but I'm going to start trying to make a lot more soon. And I uh, really enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day.